So we now have our speaker with us, Professor Shomir Kumar Shaha. He has joined. Welcome, sir. Can you, can you allow me? Hello. Can you hear sir, me? Can you hear me? Yeah. Can, can you hear me, sir? I can okay, hear okay, you. Okay, sir. Welcome, sir. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you all for being with us for a long time. So we are in the last session of this webinar. Now in this session we have with us Dr. Shomir Kumar Shaha. Now I would like to request Dr. Roibotak Shen Gupta to introduce our speaker. Sir, over to you. Roibotak, sir, over to you. Thank you, Vishwajit. So it's a matter of great honor for me to introduce to you Professor Shomir Kumar Shaha. Professor Shomir Kumar Shaha has had a very long and illustrious career so far. He was the head of the department and a professor in the Department of Mechanical Engineering, Jadapur University. He did his BME MME and PhD from Jadapur University. His field of specialization was heat power engineering with emphasis on solar thermal theory and thermodynamics. He taught for more than 40 years in Jadapur University and he also played an active role as an academic administrator because he was the director of Academic Staff College, Jadapur University. And then from 2013 to 2018, he was the dean of MCKV Institute of Engineering at Lilua. He was involved with the design and developments of several national laboratories, especially some solar energy laboratories. He has been a life member of many important institutions of our country like Solar Energy Society of India, National Council of Education, Indian Science Congress Association, Indian Science News Association, Indian Association for the Cultivation of Science, Indian Society of Technical Education and so on. He has been a reviewer and a principal investigator in many government science projects of premier importance. He has delivered invited talks in various institutes all over the world. And needless to say, he has published a lot, many, a lot of articles in international and national journals of great repute. More importantly, he has been involved in writing articles about the history of science. He edited Vigyan Kosh, two volumes of Vigyan Kosh, which is basically an encyclopedia of science and technology in India. And he has also delivered some radio talks and authored books, monograms, and popular lectures on science, even in, not only in English, but also in Bengali so that the people of our country can read them easily. Even the young children can read them. When I contacted with him regarding this talk, I was unsure whether he will be able to manage some free time in such a short notice because uh, he has a very busy schedule. So when he agreed, I was very much pleased. And it's a matter of great honor that we have him as a speaker in this webinar. So as I said, I came across an article about Prashanta Chandra Mahalanabish authored by him and I was deeply moved by him. So I thought that he is the best person who can illuminate us about the great man 
to and truly should be said as the father of Indian statistics. So I welcome Dr. Shomir Kumar Shaha, and I request you to enlighten us all with your talk. Yes, Rupa uh, talk. Can you hear? Uh, all of you hear me? Yes, sir. Hello? I can hear. Yes, sir. I can hear you. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Robert Talk, for introducing me. Uh, accepting that, I would like to make a small correction. I was joint editor of the Big Grand Kosh with uh, Professor Shidhar Ture, whom I find to be uh, listening to this lecture also. I'll start with a quotation from Tagore from the book Gitanjali which for which he got the Nobel Award in the year 1913. Uh, you can understand that is more than 100 years back. And uh, the poetry, which also moved Prashanto Chandra Mahala Rapish, is where the mind is without fear and the head is held high, where knowledge is free, where the world has not been broken up into fragments by narrow domestic walls, where words come out from the depth of truth, and tireless striving stretches his arm towards perfection, and uh, a few other lines, and ends by saying the note that into that heaven of freedom, my father let my country awake. This was a song and a offering and a poetry which must have moved many like Prashanto Chandra Maharanavish, who studied in England but returned back to his country and stayed in the country to make a great international institution on statistics, which today is a global phenomena. And uh, also, he contributed a lot in the field of statistics, which to him, I must say, was not simply a matter of mathematical equations or correlations, and regressions only, but was key to technology, meaning it could be applied to every sphere of life. And Prashant Chandra actually started his career as a physics professor, but ultimately he moved over to statistics and applied all his knowledge to the field of Mm -hmm. the Indian applications. Now, Rebotok, uh, will you present the slide, please? Or shall I share it from here? Whatever, whatever, whatever you say, sir. No, if you, you show the flat slide. So just uh, keep in tune with my speech, and because I, I, I seem to not be having the slides here. So oh. you move have to move fast forward, right? Can you? Please. Then I, I, I will uh, slide. Yes. Next one. Next one. Yeah. See, this uh, actually is a quotation from Professor Anderson's book, Nucleus and the Nations. This quotation is important in the sense because here he tells that in India there were many scientists, C. V. Raman, who won the Nobel Prize, P. C. Mahanabish who established the Indian Statistical Institute, 
es que Mitro, Shishir Kumar Mitro, then Shatendranath Bosch, after whose name Boshop Boson is named, D.S. Kothari, who established the physical research laboratory, all of them physicists. See, Prashantam Halanabish was a physicist by education. And then they built up and worked on fields which deserve biographical attention is in their own rights. But only C.V. Raman and to a lesser degree, Professor Amen Shahar is he perceived him. Now, this Professor Anderson wrote in 2010, and when I met him in 2018, he told that in your country, Professor Anderson is from Canada, he told that in your country, many scientists worked on many fields, and you should pay attention to their lives to learn about how science is to progress in your country. And uh, that uh, put my attention more to Professor Prashanto Chandro, Maulana Vish's life. Uh, next. Uh, there are only two published biographies by uh, Prashanto Mohanan Abish. See, one was in 1983 by uh, Sri A. Abish. It, this book is out of print. And uh, another is by Professor Ashok Rudro, who was in Bishro Bharati. That was also a 1996 book, is not available. So, Prashanto Chandra Mohanan Abish seems to be forgotten on un un unknown even in his own country as a man. The institution remains, and the institution is not named after him. him. It is named after India. It is Indian Statistical Institute. It is not like other institutes in India, where the institutes are named after persons. Prashanto Chandra is remembered for his contribution in the statistics and for building this institute. And that's why we should focus more on the personal life and works of Prashanta Chandra Mohan Rabish to know about him. Next. Uh, Prashanta Chandra was uh, born to the family of Guru Charan Mahalan Abish, who was contemporary of Devendranath Tagore. See, Devendranath Thakur, I could say, but unfortunately, there are international audiences in this uh meeting and tagore in english is more acceptable to me them and keshav chandra shen who also established the brahma Shaman. now guru Chandra's. i'm highlighting the grandfather of prashanta chandra because guru Chandra was a rebel guru Chandra was a brahma uh, follower and guru Chandra was a vidyashagol follower because he married and widow following the paths of Vidyashagor. These rebel characteristics went to the streaks of Prashanta Chandra to some extent. Genetically, this happens. Prashanta Chandra's uh, parents were Prabodh Chandra and Nirod Vashi. Prabodh Chandra was a, was a, that way, an entrepreneur. He had a, uh, shop near uh, where in Kolkata the Metro Cinema is now, and uh, that was a shop of selling uh, toys, records, and all that. And uh, uh, and Prashanto Chandra's mother was Nirod Bashini, who was, uh, if I remember right, was the sister of Dr. Nilraton Shorkar. And this family tree actually made Prashanto Chandra move in areas other than fields of statistics and made him actually connected to Rabindranath Thakur all through his life. Both Prashanto Chandra and Nirmal Kumari were connected to Rabindranath all through their lives till the death of Rabindranath. So, I am trying to put the actual picture of Prashanta Chandra, the man, because he had 
Chotendranath Bosch, Meghnath Shah, as his contemporaries. He studied in presidency. He went to United Kingdom. And still he went back to United India and stayed back there to make statistics a very important subject in the Indian perspective and to establish an institute. Next, please, Rebata. So what happens to many, what happened to many great people at that time from Bengal, I could see that all went to, many went to United Kingdom, that's either London or to Cambridge or to Edinburgh. Say for example, Professor Profullo Chandra Ray, he went to Edinburgh, that is in Scotland, a part of the United Kingdom now. Shubhash Chandra Bosch went to United Kingdom, that was a ruler of India at that point of time, but Shubhash Chandra went there and went back to country. Similarly, following their path, of course, but Pandit uh, Bidashagor did not go abroad, but he was very well connected with Fort William and all that. What I want to emphasize is that one is the education, uh, and next is the cultural makeup of a great person. What ha what happens is that the cultural makeup is made by where he moves, where he goes, where he acquires his training, basic training, and from that. Now, Prashanta Chandra, in 1913, after doing his BSc, was sent to London by his parents to, but Prashanta Chandra moved to Cambridge. Cambridge, what he did in Cambridge, that is important in the life, that is important in the life of Prashanta Chandra. It influenced him much. Next slide, please. Uh, well, uh, the Brijendranath Shil connection came later, actually. Uh, I'm sorry, you can go back to the earlier slide, please. Yeah. Prashanta Chandra in Cambridge, what happened to Prashanta Chandra in Cambridge is important to me. Prashanta Chandra was studying in King's College, and in Queen's College, a contemporary of him was studying. I mean, studying means Ramanujan, who has been the first fellow of, second fellow of Royal Society from India, was in Queen's College and they stayed nearby. Why I am bringing Sri Srinivasa Ramanujan's name here is that Prashanta Chandra in 1913 used to walk with Sri Ramanujan in the morning, which he writes in his paper in 1993 in Current Science, that they used to take a walk on the grounds of Cambridge, which were beautiful. And you can understand in the morning in Cambridge, it would have been cold, it would have been cold. But Ramanujan and Prashanta Chandra walked side by side. And what they talked about, it is not recorded, excepting what Prashanta Chandra says, that we walked on, we talked on a lot of things like, on Indian conditions and mathematical, physical, phys philosophical foundations of mathematics mainly. Actually, Prashanta Chandra was very much influenced by this as he writes. That I'm talking about 1913. So Ramanujan, you must, I must tell briefly here, and those who want to go into detail may study the book, The Man Who Knew Infinity, by Robert Carnegie, or can watch the movie The Man Who Knew Infinity, that Ramanujan was from South India, Madras. But he did not have anything but a more than a BSc degree. 
but because of his original works professor g h hardy took him to england by a scholarship that day traveling to england was not easy it took it, it was to be traveled by on seas and it required a lot of effort and ramanujan was coming from a conservative family he was a vegetarian but he this has this had implications on prashant chandra's life these life stories now what is important is that actually ramanujan in his own right not being a phd became a fellow of the royal society in uh, 2018 he was the second fellow of royal society and these details can be seen everywhere that ramanujan's notebooks are fascinating on theory of numbers so prashant chandra was influenced by two things one is sri ramanujan's philosophical concept of mathematics and second is the theory of number connection of sri ramanujan so next slide please now in india professor bajendranath shil who actually presented his first paper at, from kujbihar college on meet, meaning of race tribe and nation in the 1911 uh races congress in london 1911 that was 109 years 110 years back uh he presented a paper on uh theory of numbers and uh, its relation to the anthropometric race characteristics on which he did some work and uh the idea prashant chandra got this idea from brajendranath shil now next slide please prashant chandra acknowledges that his entire background of statistical knowledge especially in its logical aspects was learned from professor bajendranath shil with whom he got acquainted during his interaction as a physics professor from presidency working in a it results review committee of calcutta university where he worked so uh, the interconnection is like this the prashant chandra went back to india he was uh, doing courtship with his future wife who was a daughter of the founder of the brahma samaj hirambo chandra maitro so prashant chandra actually was influenced by many things he stayed back in india and he started working on statistics and theory of numbers which he started working from 1915 and 16 onwards next next slide here statistics come into picture the work done by prashant chandra with prajendranath shil was frequency distribution of marks the correlation between marks the percentage of passes the rate of continuation of higher studies the rate of wastage of materials in examination etc etc now these paper was never published as prashant chandra writes but 300 pages of full scale galley proof was collected by prashant chandra and rajendranath shil next slide please so the examination results were analyzed by prashant chandra and rajendranath shil and from that 
also prashant chandra acquired many ideas regarding examinations education in person and in education education uh, giving and all that now next slide next slide Prof. Brujendranath Shil was the person who wrote a lot on mathematics, and uh, this one of the papers by Prof. Chandra um, Brujendranath was "Use and Abuses of Examinations," which was published by the Calcutta University Education Commission, and uh, this also influenced Prof. Chandra. Next slide, please. Uh, I have told this already uh, that Ramanujan did not have any formal degree, but rose to get the highest possible uh, award possible for a scientist in uh, India, that is Fellow of the Royal Society. I am not talking about the Nobel Prize because Nobel Prize is not given in mathematics, as you must be must also know. It is. Award in economics in a different way, not by the original Nobel Committee of Alfred Nobel, but well, uh, mathematics was considered as a major subject in the Royal Society, and so Professor G. H. Hardy could get Ramanujan elected in 1918 to uh, the Royal Society, to which. Prashant Chandra was later elected in 2000 uh, in 1948 only. 1948 only. Next slide, please. Now, the Prashant Chandra wrote about the philosophical aspects of statistics in his paper, which I have referred here. Next slide, please. Uh, another thing that influenced Prashant Chandra to the field of statistics was the journal Biometrica, which was edited by Carl Pearson. With him, Prashant Chandra got connected later, and Prashant Chandra is a transition from Physics to statistics started at that point of time. See, this is important to the students who are attending this seminar, to all those, those who are listening to me today, that the basic subject in which one studies does not really make any difference on the subjects on which he later works after doing self-learning, doing practical learning, and all that. That happened in the life of Prashant Chandra because he was not formally taught statistics. He learned statistics on his own. Why I emphasize this is that this Self study nowadays has become a part of our life through online courses, through all these things. We can all learn because the age bar is not there, the time bar is not there. So you can learn anything from anywhere. This you those who are young in the audience must remember. Next. We must uh, briefly review Prashant Chandra's uh, teaching life because this I'll do briefly because Prashant Chandra was a teacher of physics. He wrote the foreword of the Meghnath Shah Shotten Bose translation of relativity theory book published by Kolkata University in 1920, which basically is a history of physics paper. This book is now available from Calcutta University, Kolkata Vishwavidyalaya. So 
if anybody wants they can see what prashant chandra wrote in that that was 1920 22 period when he wrote the history of physics and from that he translated transited slowly to statistics just as a line i would say here that the compatriots of uh, professor mohanan abish that is professor shaha meghnath shaha he actually moved to elahabad for some time uh, where he trained basically ds kothari and all those people and shrutendranath bosh also moved to dhaka but prashant chandra did not move uh, from calcutta this is important this is important next please next uh what did prashant chandra teach, teach at presidency prashant chandra uh, actually taught hydrostatics and i i last evening i heard from one what he started his class by saying is that he asked the students a question what is a liquid and he wanted a formulate formulatory answer and when students did not give that he was not ready to accept that that was prashant chandra's mind anyway uh, so that was prashant chandra uh, in presidency college in 1920 to 1930 period next slide please uh yeah this is what i told uh, uh yeah in the last uh, few minutes that prashant chandra uh, wrote a introduction to a book which contained the trans german or uh, english translations of einstein's papers uh, translated by professor meghnath shah and shotan nagbos together next Uh, I go into the personal life of Prashant Chandra next because this interests me a lot. Uh, why should one go into the personal life of a professor or a scientist who was basically an institution of India? I I would like to emphasize here the point that if you see Prashant Chandra's pictures in his late ISI years, which some of which I will show here. we can see him with jd barnal we can see him with julio kuri we can see him with norbert weiner the father of information theory one of the fathers of information theory but nirmal kumari was always there with prashant chandra uh, and nirmal kumari came for a uh, very conservative family uh, in that time of india uh, in brahmo samaj leader's daughter but prashant chandra uh, was not ready to accept that nirmal kumari will not ha hand will not be given to him so he remained persistent and his marriage with uh, nirmal kumari who was known as rani maharani bish took place in 1923 only all his compatriots got married by that time in 1923 prashant chandra was aged uh, 30 so you can see however rabindranath sang in that marriage reception so we find that rabindranath was there all he needs prashant chandra is right next next slide now what prashant chandra got from rabindranath that is important here rabindranath the quotation with which i started tonight we which influenced eats eats the poet who wrote the preface to gitanjali which influenced the nobel committee which influenced rodenstein which influenced andrews which influenced uh the soldier in the battlefield who carried a gitanjali in his pocket was tagore's universal inter internationalism while he speaks transcends the boundaries of god i mean boundaries of the 
material world and transcends towards something all in encompassing which he understood the tagore and his father devendranath understood as the universal uh, brahmo which we are still unable to understand but well it influenced prashanto chandra because he studied physics he studied quantum mechanics he studied relativity and ultimately this was the thing uh, which he found can made be made uh, can make life meaningful in some sense so actually that's why prashanto chandra and one very famous bengali poet Shukumar Roy, who was father of the great film director Shotojit Ray, Shotojit Ray's name uh, you must all know because he is famous for his films. I have to say that Shotojit Ray's father, because many of you you may not be knowing Shukumar Ray. Because Sukumar Ray's book are in Bengali only, not many translated into English. So, and Sukumar Ray was a very close friend of Prashanto Chandra, which I'll just say in a line that Sukumar Ray, who was also close to Ravindranath, who was actually a very close front friend of prashanto chandra who lived on two sides of a broad road cutting across the city of kolkata uh, prashanto chandra uh, residing in number 10 um, uh, sorry upendra kishor uh, i mean shukumar roy residing in Number ten, with Coronwadi Street, then and now Vihar Sharoni, and Prashant uh, um, Chandra residing in two hundred ten. Uh, sorry, Shukumar Ray. So they were residing opposite to each other, Prashant Chandra and Shukumar Ray, and the number ten Coronwadi Street at Vihar Chandra Sharoni was a very important uh, house at that point of time in. Bengal history and Indian history, because one uh, lady also lived in that house, whose name you all must be knowing, because she is in the publicity mode now. Doctor Kadambini Ganguly, the first lady doctor from India. You see. uh these things they were living side by side they all became great but they probably did not know at that point of time what they were going to be i want to emphasize the this that shukumar roy kadambini ganguly and prashanto chandra mahalanobis were born and brought up in the same milieu Prashant Chandra living in his own house, Sukumar Rai uh, living in his rented house in a rented house with his father, and Kadambini Ganguly living in a rented house with his husband, uh, Doctor uh, Sri Darokanath Ganguly. So these had a long and all-pervading impact on Prashant Chandra's life. Next slide, please. Prashant Chandra's administrative experience was enhanced by his association with Tagore, Rabindranath Sori, and Rabindranath Thakur, and his drafting of the Vishwa Bharati Constitution in 1921, where he again brought. Uh, Sri Sir Brijendranath Shil also, Brijendranath was also knighted to uh, open the Vishwakarthi University, which was formed in 1921 from the 
Brahmacharya Ashram that was established in 1901 by Devendranath Thakur. And just to say this to you who are young in the audience, that Prashanta Chandra used to go to Devendranath's Jurashako house, used to sit as a kid near the feet of Devendranath, where Devendranath once said to Prashanta Chandra that you will become a great person one day, you will become a great person one day. And it really happened, though Devendranath did not believe in this type of preaching, neither uh, Prashanta Chandra, neither any of them, but it has happened really. These are all documented in the books by Nimal Kumari and Prashanta Chandra. Next, next, next. Please, we'll skip the, the one important point I would like to emphasize here those who are to those who are present. See, Tagore was one of those few who relinquished his knighthood. This was an award by the then colonialists, and Tagore in 1910. He wrote a letter all through his night, and the this this relinquishing of the uh, knighthood was was um, uh, read to Prashanta Chandra, and he only knew about this. So, Prabhupada, great aspect which must have influenced again Prashanta Chandra that. He was the one to give up knighthood. He criticized the colonialists because of the Jalionalbag massacre. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Uh, I, I'll go fast from now on here. Uh, the statistical lab, the statistical institute stat started as a statistical lab at Presidency College, which you must know. All big things start small. All big things start small, because the PCM started with doing projects on uh, statistics on behalf of the British government. He was teaching physics, but doing statistical projects. And he coined the term the technology for statistics, uh, which was later supported by his one of his compatriots, Professor C. R. Rao. By the way, Professor C. R. Rao lives in US now travels between US and in India, he's 100 years old now. I mean, I would not say old, he's very fit, but he's 100 years aged now. And I had the privilege to meet him in 2012, that was nine years back when he was 19, uh, he was 91 years old in Hyderabad. He told that Prashant Chandra believed in statistics to be an application area for human benefit, and that's why he coined the term key technology. Next slide, please. Uh, here, in 1923, we go more to a statistical connection. Uh, the concept of experiment of de experimental design was formulated by R. A. Fisher in 1923. In 1924, Prashanta Chandra also publishes on design of design of experiments, which is nowadays required by most experimentalists for performing experiments. Next slide, please. Next, we'll skip some more slides. Okay, let's uh, skip the slides now. We'll go to the statistical works and other things of Prashanta Chandra. Please, skip the slides. Yeah, I'll talk now, just. Hello, Roibato. No, don't share the slides anymore, Roibato, please. Yeah, am I visible, Roibato? Hello? Hello? No, sir, you are not visible, you are audible now. Sir, you are audible, not visible. Yeah, uh, I think uh, uh, make the... Uh, oh, okay. Okay, now? Uh, not yet, sir. Oh, I think, uh, I think, 
Et la pluie, non? I think you'll have to click on the video camera sign. No, uh, let's see, the thing is, the computer is not allowing that. But uh, I think uh, that for that, I will have to disable the antivirus software here, which I don't want to do. Uh, so I think I can talk uh, just without being visible. Uh, I don't know. Uh, you, as an administrator, can't you do something? Hello? Uh, no, sir. Actually, if the, cam if the camera is not taking your photo, I mean, the camera yeah. in your computer, yeah. then I can yeah. do it. I can understand. Uh, I can understand. Yeah, I can, I, can, I can see that here from here. But the thing is that the software is not doing the antivirus. So I'll be uh, brief from this point here because I have taken half an hour, 30 minutes. See, uh, it's not it's not a matter if I'm not visible. Uh, you can hear all of you can hear me. Uh, so Prashanto Chandra, uh, from 1930 to 1900, uh, uh, actually it was in 1939 or 40, he got the society registered under the Registration Act in Kolkata with uh, Sir R. N. Mukherjee as chairman and uh, uh, the vice chancellor of then Calcutta University as one of the members also. Now, uh, what happened was something like this. The importance of statistics became uh, very obvious to Prashanto Chandra globally from his days when he started working on statistics in presidency in 1930s. But then he thought that it is important to build a institute to study this thing. So what happened was something like this. He got connected to Professor Fisher, Professor Professor Pearson, and all that in UK. And he started public publication of papers, and and he published a paper on large scale sample survey in the Royal Society Proceedings in 1944, and finally he was awarded the Fellowship of Royal Society in 1948. I think, uh, Robotok, you will have to go to the slides back. Robotok. OK, sir. From the previous slide where I had stopped. No, you move. For, I'll, I'll say just go on, because uh, okay. I'm not being allowed to do anything from here, actually. Okay. I mean, by the computer. Hello? Yeah. Um, it is told that PCM neglected agriculture. Nowadays, one criticism pointed towards him is that PCM neglected agriculture. It's not true. PCM did work on jute crops in Bengal in 1940, and the report was published in 1968, titled Sample Census of Area Under Jute in Bengal. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. This is the FRS, can you enlarge the um, FRS citation? Can you enlarge this slide, Roboto? Hello? I'm trying, Hello? sir. I'm trying, sir. Let me see. No, if you can't do it, it's fine. 
No, I think sir, there is some problem. Uh, oh, yeah. okay, okay. Leave it. Keep the slide as it is. Yeah. You learn. This is learning process. Learning curve of mind. See what I want to emphasize here is that see, trained of Prashanta Chandra Ramanujan Gates Fellowship of Royal Society in 1918, and Shoten Bosch Gates in in 1958. Shoten Bosch is considered the most original scientist in India. And Prashanta Chandra got it in 1945 because after his paper publication in the Royal Society proceeding. And whereas Meghnath Shah, he was awarded Fellowship of Royal Society in 1927. 1927, that was much earlier than Prashanta Chandra. Next slide, please. Uh, Prashanta Chandra started the ISI training school in 1932. And uh, here we we can uh, learn also. Dr. Shama Prashad Mukherjee provided funds. He was the vice chancellor of Calcutta University at that point of time. In 1943, pass out list was stopped by C. R. Rao, whom I met in 2012 in Hyderabad. Professor C. R. Rao got the fellowship in somehow or other in 1960. 67. So these are no indicators of a person's uh, success. Next slide, please. We see the names of all here who were who mattered in Bengal at that point of time. Shuhash Chandra Bose, who in National Planning Committee formulated the National Planning Committee in the formulation was made in the as Congress president in 1938, where Mohan Abish wrote a statistical supplement. And we find that Jawaharlal Nehru visited ISI in March 1946. Nehru sent his secretary, Pitam Pond, who studied physics in Allahabad University. and who worked with M.N. Shah. So, and then PCM and Panth went together to USA and Panth was close to PCM for next 25 years. Next slide, please. So this is how Prashanta Chandra got into planning of the five-year plans of India. We'll uh, go to the next slides first. I'll say stop to you. Yeah. Please, next one. Next one. This. Uh, this, 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 this one. Uh, the earlier one. The campus of the Indian Statistical Union is Institute, which was working from Presidency College, shifted to Baranagar in 1951, 201 BT road. MSTAT course was introduced. And in ISI, anthropology to linguistics to economics, where as also a computer division was started. It was truly an interdisciplinary organization. And now have branches all over India. Next slide, please. Who visited ISI? See, physicists like Dirac. Mathematicians like Koloma Garav of probability theory, Norbert Weiner of information theory fame. So all of them, Tim Bargen was a Nobel laureate, uh, later became a Nobel laureate in economics. So these all these persons visited Indian Statistical Unit the Institute and the pictures of all of them visiting ISI are preserved in a museum inside the ISI campus, which is the Amropali, the residing house of Prashanta Chandra, where he stayed with Nilwan Kumari till the end of his life. Next slide, please. Uh, these are the persons who vis visited uh, Indian Statistical Unit. I will not, um, you can draw or infer your own conclusions from here. Thank you. Next slide.
Next slide. Yeah. I would end by showing these pictures. I'm sorry we can't enlarge this, nor can I show with more digital know-how available to me. Probably I could enlarge some of the pictures. I can show here that, see, here is Lady Mohananabish. I mean, Nirmal Kumari Mohananabish. Here is Prashant Chandra. Here is Rabindranath. And then we can see here Nirmal Kumari, Prashant Chandra, and we can see uh, Irene Kuri, Jolio Kuri, and all those. We can see Ramarola and Tagore and Nirmal Kumari. We can see Shotendranath Bosch, Norbert Weiner, and Prashant Chandra. Please, I would like to emphasize here, please. I choose those pictures from a gallery of pictures. Why did I choose them? I could have chosen any. Romarola was a literature person and a philosopher. Pratendranath Bosch was a physicist who did not get any awards which he was supposed to get. And Irene Curie, Julia Curie were related to Madame Curie. We all know. So Madame Curie who got Nobel Prize twice. So all these pictures show who are the persons Prashant Chandra brought to Kolkata, to India. And we are, we are not really aware of it at that point of time. And we only came to know of it now, we're coming to know of it now, as we study history, we study history of science, then we see a trade of connection amongst all these persons and all these philosophies of life, the Ramarola, Shruten Bosch, Norbert Weiner, J.D. Barnum, Irene Kuri, Jolio Kuri, what do they have in common? What do they have in common? The only person common here is Prashant Chandra Mohananabish, who was very close to Tagore and who accepted the spirit of universal internationalism from him, and that made possible the establishment of Indian Statistical Institute, because without funding, this would not have been possible. And then we have the glorious institute now, and we have in the coming days to come, we'll be having, see Norbert Weiner and Bose, Toten Bose. This was a, again a coincidence in the sense that Boson is a particle which is dominating the study of particle physics now, and Norbert Weiner's theory of cybernetics is also getting more importance now. And Prashant Chandra tried to build a own computer with Jadapur University at that point of time, but he did not succeed. But if he succeeded, probably India would have led, as I quoted in the first slide, that we the India, we can lead much, we could have, we can lead to a India which will become much greater, where the mind without without fear will hold our heads high. So Prashant Chandra actually was looking towards such an India, so that he got connected with all of them. So when he passed out in 1972 on 28th June, Prashant Chandra was what was he thinking about? We'd very much all like to know what was he dreaming of. I hope he was dreaming of a better future for India, for the whole world. And I hope that you, the next generation, and the seniors who are also learned persons from all fields will carry forward to this mission of Prashant Chandra and this mission of Rabindranath Tagore forward. With this, I conclude my lecture and I will be available for answering two questions now. Thank you very much. Kindly uh, stop the slides now. Yeah, it's fine. I'm ready to take questions now. If anyone has any questions.
So if anyone has any question, he or she can ask it. You can unmute, unmute uh, if anybody asks a question. Rivata, kindly do unmute uh, or yes, let sir. him unmute himself or herself and ask a question. They can unmute themselves, sir. Actually, yeah. Uh, sometimes the software is not allowing. It don't allow the video for Zoom. It would have allowed the video for Google Meet. You have to we learn all these things in practice. Yes. Yeah. Is, is and does anybody have a question or if no? I'm in a different time zone and different place, so... Sir, uh, just, it's not a question, but yeah, please. Uh, it's, uh, I share uh, one feelings uh, with uh, the audience that uh, at that time, Prashanto Chandra and so many stars, they form a galaxy and make a renaissance, successful renaissance for uh, getting the independence of our India. So mm -hmm. most of the stars, they contributed their life, their uh, properties, everything. But now, at that moment, almost all of us uh, just enjoy it, get the benefit it. But there is a question, so for the next uh, the generation after 20 years or 50 years, what they can get from us? So how can it be possible? In one point of view, I think this type of history uh, must come in our syllabus from, from childhood to and others, so that we can uh, get a commitment to our society to contribute, not only just uh, to assimilate or to get to exploit the society to contribute as much as possible so that we can enrich our society can enrich so your feelings sir you are absolutely right Roibot. as convener of this webinar i'm thankful to you for inviting me at this point of time it was actually i have been uh, I have been emphasizing this again and again for last 10 years that history of science is one field of study which can bring the so-called division between humanities and science, remove this barrier, can enrich historians with the development of scientific theories, knowledge and the uh, scientists about the historical development of the society and all that the importance is what they can contribute the 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 students who are listening to this lecture must know that in 20 years when they will grow up i mean they are grown up they will cut start contributing to the society they must know about First one is that the way we use energy will change altogether. The way we use mathematics and computer, etc., will get changed altogether because we will all have a computer in the pocket and the energy will not be anymore. It will be electricity, but it will not be the fossil fuel bond electricity, but it will be mostly electricity from batteries. So Whatever subjects one reads today, be it history, philosophy, science, mathematics, physics, statistics, I think you'll have to understand that you'll have to find newer ways of learning, newer ways of presenting, like newer ways of presenting. We did present with, say, I don't know if you remember that or not. See, basically, we started reading in chalk and board in blackboard. Then we started reading in um, the slides. Then we went to PowerPoint. And now we are wanting international in the video mode, in the Zoom or Google Meet, etc. So uh, I think uh, there are some uh, uh, in the audience, if he, can he or she can contribute, it's fine. 
or if if I, what I said, if it in, if it raises further question, I'm ready to answer. Roberto, you can ask questions. What is the you can ask question? <laughs> Yeah. Yes, sir. The question was actually raised by Professor Mohadev Shahu, who is also a teacher in our department at Bijayanagar and Mahavidyalaya. And no, it's 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 it's, it's a right. Actually, actually, uh, I think he is right in the sense that uh, ultimately, why do we spend some time? There must be a takeaway from that. This time we we are spending together, all of us from different corners of the globe. I can see. Um, uh, persons who are from different parts of the globe. The thing is, the takeaway is that that history, philosophy, mathematics, economics, whatever subjects one studies, the takeaway is this: the ultimately it is for the nation and our country. We must take this subject to the people who are not getting with the benefits of formal learning even. So for that, we must teach it in a we must uh, teach it in a proper, simple language, if if possible in vernacular. I can speak in Bengali, but I am not doing that because it is an international audience. Otherwise, Amar jeta mona hai, oi abaro shei kotha ta aschi. Amar chitto jeta bhoy shun bhoy shunno, uchcho jeta shid, gang jeta jeta mukto, shiram jaga jodi amra matha. Chali Matha Uchukure Chodke Pari, Chita Nijed Deshi, or Nijo Deshi Ho, or Deshi Ho, Tahalekin to Amar Munha, Shabari, ultimately, humanity, Atugulo, Destagbekina, whether there will be so many countries, that's a big question also. That's a philosophical question. I think this is a right question in the right direction. Yes? Roberto? Yes. Is there any other question? Anyone? Hello, sir. I I do have a question. Yes, please. Uh, sir, you mentioned uh, how computer came. Please uh, identify yourself and slightly louder, please. Please. So, sorry, sir. I am a first year economics honor student of Bijana and Mohammed Dala. I am Bangla Bol, but I am a Shubi. Bangla Bol, Bangla Bol. So, আপনি ওই একটা জায়গা বললেন ওই জানা ওই জায়গাটা জানার খুব ইচ্ছে ছিল যে ওই কি করে আইএসআই কলকাতা বা যাদবপুর ইউনিভার্সিটিতে মানে প্রশান্ত চন্দ্র মহলানবিশের হাত ধরেই কম্পিউটার বা সাইবারনেটিক্স বা ইনফরমেশন থিওরি পড়াশোনাগুলো এখানে শুরু হয়েছিল সেই জায়গাটা যদি একটুখানি বলেন আরেকবার হ্যাঁ আমি বলছি আমি আপনি আপনাকে আমি দেখুন করেই বলছি যদিও আমি জানি হয়তো বয়সে আপনি কম হবেন কিন্তু যে যাদবপুর বিশ্ববিদ্যালয়ে যখন প্রশান্ত চন্দ্র মারা যান 1972 সালে তার আগে 1900 আমরা আমরা যাদবপুরে ভর্তি হয়েছিলাম 1963 সালে তো এই সময়টায় 1963 থেকে 1968 আমরা যাদবপুর বিশ্ববিদ্যালয়ে পড়েছি আমরাও জানতাম না আমরা যাদবপুর বিশ্ববিদ্যালয় থেকে আমরাও জানতাম না যে যাদবপুর বিশ্ববিদ্যালয়ের একটা যে বিল্ডিং এ ইলেকট্রনিক্স এন্ড টেলিকমিউনিকেশন ডিপার্টমেন্ট ছিল সেইখানের একটা ঘরে এই কম্পিউটার তৈরির চেষ্টা হচ্ছে এবং অধ্যাপক বিশ্বজিৎ নাগ অধ্যাপক জ্ঞান সরোজ চ্যাটার্জি এদের সঙ্গে সহযোগিতায় প্রশান্ত চন্দ্র মহলানবিশ প্রশান্ত চন্দ্র কিন্তু ডক্টরেট ছিলেন না প্রশান্ত চন্দ্রকে কলকাতা বিশ্ববিদ্যালয়ে ডক্টরেট দেন ওনারা কিন্তু তখনকার দিনে তখনকার দিনে তো ট্রানজিস্টরও সবে জাস্ট এসেছে ভারতবর্ষে অতটা চালুও হয়নি তখন তারা ওই ট্রানজিস্টর ক্যাথোড্রে টিউব সব দিয়েই তারা একটা কম্পিউটার বানানোর চেষ্টা করছিলেন বিকজ কম্পিউটারে আলটিমেটলি ইলেকট্রিক্যাল সার্কিটে যে সিগন্যালটা যায় সেটাকে সুইচ অন সুইচ অফ করতে গিয়ে রিলে সার্কিট ব্যবহার করা হয় সেটা অনেক সহজ হয়ে যায় ট্রানজিস্টর পরে চিপ আসার ফলে সেইটা কিন্তু তখনকার দিনেই অধ্যাপক জ্ঞান সরণ চ্যাটার্জি আমাদের ইলেকট্রনিক্স বিভাগের প্রধান ছিলেন উনি তখন নাসা ন্যাশনাল অ্যারোনটিক্স অ্যান্ড স্পেস অ্যাডমিনিস্ট্রেশন যেটা আমেরিকার তার সঙ্গে কাজ করছিলেন এই সবের ওপর প্রশান্ত চন্দ্র সেটা জানতেন এবং প্রশান্ত চন্দ্র কিন্তু তাদের সহযোগিতায় এই কম্পিউটারটা তৈরির উদ্যোগ নিয়েছিলেন কম্পিউটারটা নাম দেওয়ার চেষ্টা হয়েছিল ইসি জু কিন্তু সেই কম্পিউটারটা তো আমাদের ওখানে শেষ পর্যন্ত তৈরি হয়নি সেটাই হয়েছে ব্যাপারটা 
আশা করি আপনাদের মতো যারা এখন অত্যন্ত আগ্রহী এবং উদ্যোগী তারা ভবিষ্যতে দেশের সামনে যখন এরকম সুযোগ আসবে সেটা হাত ছাড়া হয়ে যেতে পারে অবশ্যই ধন্যবাদ প্রশ্নের উত্তর পেয়েছেন তো আপনি হ্যাঁ স্যার আরে বলছি যে থ্যাঙ্ক ইউ স্যার রাস্তায় আছো না ঘরে কি আছো কেউ কি আর প্রশ্ন করবেন না নালে রইব তো ঠিক আছে আজকের মত एनीवन ক্লোজ করে দাও এনি কোশ্চেনস ওকে নো মোর কোশ্চেন ইট সিমস সো থ্যাঙ্ক ইউ স্যার for such a wonderful lecture we could learn a lot of things from you and uh, i would request you to assure us that sometime in the future we'll again have you with us as a speaker talking about this or about some other topics because i'm sure all here have liked your talk immensely Thank you. I will end by saying I would have loved to give it in Bengali.